holidays and games go together like peanut butter and jelly or like peanut butter and chocolate or peanut like and honey peanut butter and honey and banana and banana but but why why do holidays and games go along with each other so well it's holidays and games on this episode of board game faith the bi-weekly show exploring the intersection of religion spirituality and board games Well, hello. Welcome, everybody, to Board Game Faith. It is so good to have you here. My name is Daniel. My name is Kevin. And uh, it is a, a joy to, to welcome you uh, to uh, this little show where we uh, talk about games and religion and spirituality and things like that. Kevin, it is good, as always, to see you. Um, how are you doing? I'm good. I'm very good, Daniel. Thank you. Very nice. Good. And good, yourself? Good. I'm doing well too. Thank you. I'm doing fine, but I'm not doing as well as you because you have recently had an adventure. Yes, I went to Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love for brotherly PAX love. Unplugged. I decided to go big or go home. I'd never been to a convention, board game convention before. So why not go to one of the biggest in the country? Why not? 30,000. Wow. Of my 30, new closest 000. friends were there, so yeah, that was really neat. It was it was an interesting experience. You said like the first day the line wrapped around the block three the times. Second day it went the three times, day. and then I saw someone on YouTube had sort of video video uh, v blog u blog v- vlogged v- v- blogged v- it v- blog? vlogged it he v- blogged the he said it went around four. Wow. Four times at one point around the building. I guess at that point I was already in line one or two of the wrap and I didn't care because I just wanted to get in. But yeah, I mean, it's massive. It's huge. It's, uh, it's, there's a lot of angles to it. You could go there to shop and buy games, especially games that are released but not distributed yet. So Zoo Vadis is a really great game. I got to play there. I did not buy a copy because I didn't think I had space in my luggage because I didn't check anything. But uh, it won't be available in North America till April. But I could have bought it there. So that, so that cool. haunts me to this day. So, cool. so you can buy games. You can try games at the library. You can try games that are in process. So the upcoming Molly House game by Whirligig, I got to play an early sort of just a brief round of that to nice. see what it's like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I didn't realize that was the designer, Joe Kelly. I think is his name. He was actually the person at the table. Oh, so really? Meet Cole Worley and people and his brother Drew um, and make some new friends. So it's really neat. It is tricky in that it's so big. You really need a tribe. You need a group. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that means you either have to bring friends, which I didn't do, or you're going to have to be patient and cultivate friends that you will see and meet up with on a regular basis. Right. If that, right. right. So you end up, it, it's going to take a few years, but as you go and you, you, you make, you meet people, you play games, you get their contact info, you ask if they're going next year, you hang out with them for lunch or dinner or play some games and there. Yeah. And you did, you met some, some board game of faith, uh, some, some members of the board game faith family, right? Some, uh, like I did, some of our listeners. I, did. I got yeah, to meet yeah. some members of the family, which is cool, especially, John Glenn, not the astronaut, and he is a great guy. He we got to spend some time and chat, and he is he is trying to work on some games in production. He's met with some publishers, and that was really cool to see that process. That's so part cool. of what's happening at these conventions is is board game publishers are looking for new ideas, new designers. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, that was it was neat. So he demoed one of his games with me and described some of the others and. Oh yeah. great! Well, so well, good luck awesome. to you, John, and trying and getting these games published. That I know John reached out um, on social media or direct messaged us to see if any either of us was there. Um, I know Camping Meeple reached out as well, and that it, it a little tricky, but uh, tricky as well. But we just it was so great to have folks reaching out and yeah, Liz I, I Davidson hope in the future we'd love out. to meet with any of our listeners. Yeah, 
and Liz Davidson is working on a game. So yeah. it's, it's neat. It's really neat. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that That's... process. So it's definitely a big, um, it's business and fun going down at, at, yeah. at PAX. What and was Philadelphia the biggest surprise? Great. Yeah. Uh, that was, that was really, that was neat uh, to, oh. to just see, be in a big city since I don't live in one. Right. Right. What was the biggest surprise of your very first board game convention that you attended? How, how was it different than what you expected? Probably the scale. I mean, I did yeah. not realize how big the, 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 it was just fast. It, it, maybe two football fields, I'm guessing. American wow. football, which I don't know how that compares to other, to worldly, worldly football. What would you call it? Global football? I think it's just what the rest of the world calls football. Yeah. Just right. so like, I think which American football feet. is equal to 1.732 <laughs> global football. I think is what it is. I think that's the and conversion square, ratio. In square inches. That's right. The rest of the world plays metric football and American right, plays right. American right. football. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. there's, there's a, you could do inches third to, instead of squared. What do you say? Third? How do you say that? To, to, to the cube, third power, inches it. to the third power includes you, time. It includes the length of the actual game. If you want to use that measurement. Oh, right. Okay. So it'd okay. be length width of the, football field not the pitch and time that would be inches to the third power that makes total sense to me yeah yeah it's, i it's celebrate useful. all of that it's a useful it's a useful number yeah no yeah. it's just that she i mean it was just a ginormous hanger of 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 people playing game. i mean they had, they had tables out and you could check out games and play Wow, that's so amazing. I crashed in on a game of Scholars of the South Tigers because I knew the game and I saw some people setting up and I just was like, I want in. And they <laughs> said no. And I said, please. And they said no. And then I said, really, please. Poor, poor for more. And they let me in. You know, I, I came admire... in second, so they will never call me again. Oh, okay. Well, I, I admire I you though, for won. putting yourself out there and getting yeah. in the game. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's well, cool. you know, most gamers, the only requirement is a desire to play games. That's right. That's right. Yeah. What makes games great. Oh, I'm so, so glad that you went, and it sounds like you had a great time. Yeah, yeah. I think I'll go again. Um, so we'll see. And yeah. you and I are definitely scheming to go to some sort of a convention. And there's one yeah. in Charlotte, I found out, in January. So that I'll definitely go to that because I can just go down for the day. I'm an hour from Charlotte. Yeah, that's your neck I'll of the woods. Have to get a hotel or hotel is the biggest expense. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that would be flights great. Are kind of cheap now. Yeah. All right. Well, today, Daniel, we are talking about games and holidays. Right, right. And you have some uh, preliminary prologue, prefatory thoughts. I think. Oh well, I just, you know, just as you and I were talking about the subject of holidays and games, and thanks for the good suggestion of that. That was your idea. Just. They really do seem to go well together, right? Holidays mm -hmm. and games uh, really seem to go well together. Um, there are, you know, you and I were trying to think of, of a few historical examples. Um, and honestly, I think we, it was a little tricky to think of some, but like, you know, in, in Judaism, there's the dreidel, right? You have the dreidel at Hanukkah um, and neither of us are experts at that. So probably, you know, can't say much more than that, but just to acknowledge that that is a, that is a, mm -hmm. a, a traditional game played at a holy day, um, mm -hmm. dreidel in in Judaism. We sort of, I was trying to think if there's anything, you and I were talking, if there's anything like that in Christianity, not really we could think of, but I mean, the Advent calendar is kind of a gamey sort of thing that um, are in some Christian traditions, that you open up one door of the calendar each day of Advent. For those who are unfamiliar, Advent is the season of four weeks of getting ready for Christmas, getting ready for mm -hmm. the celebration of the birth of the countdown. Jesus. Really. Yeah. It's a countdown calendar. Yeah. And, and so in this tradition, you got this, this kind of a, this box that has 25 days on it for um, the 25 days of Advent or actually, of, I guess of December um, Advent doesn't always necessarily follow the 25 days of December. Well, actually, it doesn't. But anyway, it's close. And you open right. up a door for each day of the of December and a little tiny door that's like the size of a postage stamp. And behind, uh, often, behind that uh, door that you open, there's some little gift like a, a mint or a chocolate kiss or a new car. A new car, right? Yeah. yeah. Very small key to a Volvo. 
right? Through a very tiny car. That's right. Um, yes, maybe a sticker, peel a on stick, tattoo, a peel on tattoo, a um, a piece Saint of Michael gum. and all his angels. Saint Michael and all his angels, which actually isn't a lot. It's kind of he's embarrassed by that. Saint Michael it's supposed right. to be all his angels, but it's like two. Really? So it's yeah. I can't no, fit I'm it. Just in. Making that up. It is Saint Michael That's... and all his angels, but I'm just joking. Like. <laughs> It's really, he's really trying to brag, but he, 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 the, the, the other angels don't like him. Really? He's, he's a, bad. yeah, he's, he's a rules lawyer and an alpha player. Um, really? Alpha dog. Yeah. And they just don't uh, want to game with him. I mean, you do hear more about St. Mike, you know, Michael than the other angels. It would seem like you if you're the other angel, you kind of get tired of it. Maybe after a while. Like, yeah. We never hear about the angel Susan, right? And, and she actually has a battle axe. She does. Yes. Michael has a sword, but she has an axe. If so I were Susan, I'd be like, I have a battle axe, and no one talks about Angel right. Susan coming in all of her glory with the battle axe. Why does Michael get all of the <laughs> double yeah. side of glory? Yeah, I would <laughs> double the glory, Michael. <laughs> you and your single single bladed sword. It's like the Jimi Hendrix experience. They're like, does the experience mean? The drummer, <laughs> the drummer's <laughs> like, what about me? Jimmy says, shut up. <laughs> One, two, three, four. <laughs> um, and we know that there are games and other religious traditions as well that, that we're just not familiar with. Um, it just, mm -hmm. just, we just said just in passing, um, you know, that um, the game that we in the English world call snakes and ladders or shoots and ladders, you know, arose out of Hinduism, out of Hindu tradition and has some connection to some Hindu holidays as well. But that's certainly nothing that we're mm -hmm. or Hindu teaching on. Yeah. Hindu teaching yeah. concepts. Yeah. 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 You know, as you were saying, though, it, it got me thinking, I wonder if Easter hiding Easter eggs is kind of a game. So that that oh, might yeah. work. That is a game. That is that's really good. Uh, I like so that's that. a game. And that that might be like the dreidel in that it's a something you do around a holiday and it's more for kids, right? Cause I think the dreidel is for kids. Yeah. I don't think it's yeah. an adult game necessarily. Yeah. And, and hiding Easter eggs is, or finding Easter eggs is more of a kid's activity. And you know, that makes me think about the epiphany cake where you hide like, um, isn't there oh. like you hide a little figurine inside of an epiphany cake or something like that, or like the three Kings cake. Yeah. I have heard of that where I think maybe that's, I hear that may out of New Orleans or out of, out of um, Louisiana. Yeah. Maybe, I don't know. I'm I'm not. Right. It's, I, I I should have researched that before bringing it up. But um, well, I was doing a little research for Advent, and I didn't realize till just the other week that it's not celebrated in the Eastern Church, the Eastern Orthodox, Eastern Christianity. It's okay. really a Western thing because they have Epiphany. It's a bigger deal, January sixth. Yeah. Um, which is the day. God, what does Epiphany celebrate? The revealing of. I think conceptually it's the it's revealing the, it's of, the wise men. No. of Christ's identity of the world. Yeah, in the West we do the wise men on the on on that day. Yeah, that's right. I don't know, but but so I mean that's Christmas calendar, in the Orthodox but... Church is just January sixth, right? Yes, and so in the West it's December twenty fifth, and it has Advent, and in the East, which is Russian Orthodox and all those the more Orthodox traditions, um, they don't do Advent. Hmm, interesting. And I didn't they know do that. Epiphany. And they do gifts, but don't they put it in the shoes? Has something to do with the? I don't know. Well, it does have something to do with the wise men too. I think you know. I've heard from my. I think I remember from my church history classes uh, class a long time ago, um, many many years ago. But that at one time in the church, Epiphany was this kind of umbrella term, right? To to just celebrate all the ways of Christ being revealed in the world, and it included. Christ's birth, but it included other things as well. And I, I wonder if that, if if maybe January 6th, I'm just totally speculating here. We need to talk to some of our Orthodox friends, but whether January 6th today still kind of plays that role mm, in the mm -hmm. Orthodox church, that it, it is a celebration of Christmas, but it's a, it's a celebration of all the ways of kind of Christ's being revealed into the world, maybe. I don't right, know. Right. Anyway. Cool. Yeah. Cool. If you know that, any of our listeners, please let us know. We'd be interested right. to, to hear. Uh, I, like, I like how a good portion of every episode is, Kevin, you, you and I say, like, we don't know. Listeners, right. do you know? Please. <laughs> if I could get off this camera and read and go Google on Wikipedia, I might know, but I don't know right now.
Right. Because I used know, to know, but I've forgotten. We used. To, that's right. That's right. But we have amazing listeners. How about I mean in in your in in your personal experience, Kevin? Do, uh, games and have games and holidays gone together for you over the years? Not really. In the sense, I, I think some families have a game that they always play together. Mm -hmm. So that becomes part of the celebration of a holiday family social at time is they play a certain game. We have Rummy Cube has often been played in my house, but not like with my parents and my mother, especially. But it's not as if we always played it at the holidays. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So there's not a particular game that developed within my family. How about you? Do you have any? No one particular game. I mean, there are some that are common, and we'll, I'm, I'm going to be getting into them later on in our in our game list. But, um, but yeah, but games, playing games on the holidays certainly is, has been a big thing for for us. Yeah, um, really. So your family always play because see, we don't we don't always mm. yeah. play a game. Uh, um, yeah, it's usually some part of our of our holiday celebration in some ways. But is that? Because that's part of your gift or your demands or your sulking or is a, that a little, a little bit of all of that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 um, yeah. I mean, well, recently, I mean, yeah, it's because especially since we've gotten back into hobby board gaming, all of my gifts every year are games. Right. right. And so, so it's kind of like, will somebody please play with me? But, um, but before that, even before that, um, I, it was, a, I think, a part of our holidays as we would we would play some sort of mm -hmm. games together. Um, and, and it is good when, when you've got kids that are out of school. So games are great. And that's not a holiday so much as a day. Well, I guess it's a holiday in the sense of you're not necessarily going to work or school. But it's right. not a it's not about around. It's not about the religious significance of the days. Right. I think it's that's one of the reasons maybe. we need something to do. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> that's a good a good point. I think it's one of the one of the practical reasons why games and holidays go together is yeah, everyone's yeah. off. You're all together, at least in the Northern hemisphere, it's cold outside. You can't really do much outside. And so mm -hmm. how you do don't we want to talk this? about politics and you don't want right, to right. rehab, you know, you want to be together in a positive way and games are, are preeminent in that. It, yeah, they can provide yeah. a positive social interaction. Yeah. Unless it's you, some euro and you're counting sheep on your little tableau, and you don't, even, you know, like they've all fallen asleep, and, and Daniel's still playing, he's still shearing his sheep. But you know, I think in some ways, <laughs> in, in some deeper ways, that captures the spirit of the holidays. Those counting are, sheep in in your kind, kind of little sheep. wooden sheep. Right, right. Yeah, that's. Uh, I think it's implied in Luke. It's implied. It's, it's implied. Like the the shepherds and kept the their best, sheep. Na, na, it's the best nap that Kristen's had in years. Was she dozed <laughs> off playing the shearing sheep? Christmas game. <laughs> <laughs> you think there are, so there's are some practical reasons for games and holidays to go together. What are there any, and I, of course I got some thoughts on this too, but any, any theological reasons, any spiritual religious reasons for games and holidays to go together? I think this is one in our outline that you've mentioned, but I'll go ahead and take a stab at it. Cause I think it's a good one. And that's that as, as we've ruminated on this podcast in the, in the past, that, we're meant for more than work as human yeah. beings. Right. And so playing games anticipates a reality where we can enjoy each other, have fun and not have to do something. Right. Yep. Um, I was listening to Ezra Klein podcast, which I love so much recently. Well, I, and I don't know, it may have been an older episode, but the person was talking about deep reading and they cited, I'm not sure where they're pulling from this, but that Aristotle said there are three elements to the good life. It is work, which could be production or information gathering. It is, it is uh, reflection, contemplation. And this person was including kind of reading as a part of that <clears throat> life because you're using your mind and you're kind of interacting with the book. But it, you know that could include journaling or just um, thinking. So, because for Aristotle, it would have been philosophy discussions. You know, what is the meaning of life? Type things. Yeah. But the third bit is leisure. Mm. And so she doesn't go into this, but part of the good life is not working. Mm. Mm. And yeah. and so games remind us of that, especially when people are not working; they're at home, and uh, so it's a chance to have fun. Is that where you were going with? The idea of celebrating the unnecessary. I love that. I love that. No, I, well, I love yeah. that as a sense of 
yeah, it's 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 a reminder that we are created to be more than just working creatures. Yeah, yeah, that we're to to and I, that sense of work and contemplation and reflection. That's a great. Mm-hmm. That's a great triumvirate. I, I, it makes it me is. always think I about. I wish I could find the source. Yeah. Yeah, we've talked before about you know the difference between Trump. work and play, though they may not be as different as we think in some ways. But but then we've also added you know like this idea of Sabbath. You know, and, and Sabbath in mm-hmm. some ways is not the same as play. And, and I wonder if there's kind of parallels between that triumvirate and the and the and that and those yeah. three and that three sum of work and play and Sabbath kind of at the. But anyway, I don't know. But it's it's good. I like that. Yeah. No, I, I think. I think you said it really well. Yeah. I, I stole your thunder. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. You the put only in the thing, outline and then I took it. No, no. It's, I, this oh, is, bad. it was all so the outline because it's, we've worked on it together over the, over the last few years. Actually, you just only, worked on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> only thing I might add is, you know, I think this is something that you and I have talked about before in episodes that, you know, I think when you get into the realm of the unnecessary, you're, you're really, you're, you're starting to speak the language of grace, you know, that just that, right. you know, that it holidays from the eyes of the world are, you know, are unnecessary. We're, we're not in, in fact, in some ways they're kind of counterproductive because we're not out there producing like the world yeah. says we should, we should be doing. And then that's what, uh, that's what happens in a Christmas carol, right? Um, yes. Scrooge is mad that they are not working on, it. he has to give them Christmas day off. Right. Exactly. Scrooge yeah, does not yeah. see, uh, uh, to Scrooge, the, hol- the holidays are completely unnecessary, right? It's just it's right. it's it's a it's a luxury, it's a it's an indulgence, and mm-hmm. and and games, as we've talked about, you know, one of the fundamental definitions of games is the voluntary attempt to overcome unnecessary obstacles. This Bernard Suits mm-hmm. thing, the games are inherently unnecessary as well, and 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 when we're talking about giving ourselves to the unnecessary, both either in holidays or games, I, I think it, like as you said, it creates echoes and kind of gets us in a kind of a spiritual posture to think about grace because you know grace which can be defined various in various ways but just is you know this this love of god the universe all of and however we want to however we want to define it you know toward us um that is unnecessary right i mean god Mm -hmm. God doesn't. There's something superfluous to it all. Right, right. If we earn that love, yeah. then it's not it's not unnecessary anymore. It's something that we've earned, right? And so grace, by necess- by definition, is unnecessary. And I, the more we kind of celebrate the unnecessary gifts of life, I think the more it kind of gets us. Ooh, in a, that's good. I a like mental, that. spiritual posture to celebrate. To think about grace as a necessary gift from God too. Yeah. I don't, well, that's. I'm pretty sure you said that, and that I stole no, it from said you. That. Um, that's good. But, so yeah, yeah. Well, no, I like that. Well, uh, so well, thank you. So so so, Kevin, you and I have some games that we would that we have experienced that are good for holidays. Yeah. Can I add one thing along yeah, yeah. those lines? I think modern life today is particularly particularly pernicious in the sense of if people have cell phones, they're never bored. Mm. And they're hyper individualized. Mm. So the idea of watching a movie together as a family seems actually it's difficult for us. And it's strange because everybody could just retreat. Mm-hmm. So games have a particular thing to play in the sense that it can bring people together that otherwise are just going to be scrolling. Yeah. Yeah. That life yeah. is so solitary now, thanks to the cell phone and its entertainment value that, yep. um, yeah, that that in the holidays, it, it, I don't know. Forty years ago, things were different, and there was entertainment, sure, but people were bored a lot more, and I think they're more willing to watch a movie with someone or play a game out of boredom. Mm-hmm. But now we're never bored, right? Right. That's a really good point. And, That's a really good point. So games yeah. almost have like they're almost like an evangelist for spending time with one another. Mm. With another. Oh, it's like a missionary act, if you will. Game, games as evangelist solitary entertainment yeah i love that i love that and you know what along these lines when i was at pax and this is just me my observation i did not see a lot of people with airpods on and they are ubiquitous everywhere else walking down the street and i have some so i'm not against them but some people have them in all the time i didn't see very many there and i thought i wonder if that's because the people here really crave social action and social interaction in some way 
Hmm. You know, like, like, why would you go to a board game convention with AirPods in? You right, probably right. are just going to stay home. Right, right. I'm not saying there weren't any, but it was not like it is on the streets or in other places. Yeah. It hits me that, you know, oftentimes on this podcast, we've talked about how games are a fundamental part of being human. And, and you mm -hmm. know, and I think we believe that. And it's, you know, it's always been a part of human history in every society. But in other ways, hearing you talk about it now, I mean, it's almost kind of a, like a anachronism or something you know it's almost yeah, like, yeah it's just to it, it's it, it in our modern day and age to say you know let's gather around this this table and move around pieces of cardboard and wood mm -hmm. with no there's i mean yeah there's app integration sometimes and things like that but but really not much of an electrical component to it at all mm -hmm. it, it, it does seem something almost from, from another era as well yeah yeah which is cool. No, that's right. That's right. Yeah. No. So anyway, that was a little, I like that little addendum. Yeah. But we want to do recommendations of games. Yes. So these are recommendations of games for the holidays. I don't know about you, how you put your game, your game list together, Kevin. Mine are by no way like my definitive games for the holidays, but I just, I just listed some games that have worked well for our family and extended family over the holidays. And that's, so I've got a few games like that and, how, how about you? How did you think about all this? Yeah, I just made up some. Yeah, that's good. I like it. I like <laughs> yeah. it. That's the best way. I can do them alphabetically if you want. Sure. Well, yeah. Do you want to go? Should we go back and forth? What do you want to do? Let's go one. Well, I'll just go through all mine. You go through yours. Okay. Okay. I like Does it. I like it. Okay. All right. So in alphabetical order, from early letters to the end, my first pick is Zebulon. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Only Z's. The grandparents love I Zebulon. Think, I know, right? So yeah. I think a good game for the holidays. I wanted w at least one that was a little more interesting, a little yeah. crunchier, but maybe not too crunchier. I think Architects of the West Kingdom mm. is a good one mm, because good. If, if people are willing to learn it, it's, you know, you, you, Place a worker and you get something for that it. That is good. And then you take those things and you're trying to build stuff. Yeah. So they may not have seen a game like this, but I, it, it's a, got a winsome artwork. And I think you can jump into it. I think it plays five people, maybe. Maybe even more. I don't quite remember. But, it, you know, if, you're, if you've got some, some folks that are willing to invest a little time or are tired of the usual game, uh, I think Architects is my one slightly meatier choice i like that yeah that's, that's a really something great something choice it's very accessible yeah it does play one to five i was just looking up yeah okay, one to five so yeah that is one issue is if you've got a large group of people you may you may end up being a subgroup at a family event or maybe it works or it's a late night thing but yeah i would put architects on there i think that's a good one that's and a good it's not, one it's not a super expensive game if no, you and it is, it. it's very accessible you don't have to very be a, accessible. like the, the complexity level is not super high and yet it's really fun and thinky and, and um, worker placement. Yeah. Like I do this, I get this, interesting. I'm out of workers, then I'm done. That's a good so choice. That's an easy thing to grok. Yeah. Number two, I think this is the best game for accessible, but interesting. Do you want to guess? It's another A word. Accessible, it means but a color. Azul. It's another language. Azul. Azul is so good. Azul. I love Azul. That's a great one. Yeah, I it's love that. It's thinky, it's challenging, but it doesn't have to be. And it's very calming, and there's not even any numbers. It's pattern matching. Yeah, um, that's such a yeah, good one. Yeah, that's a really pleasant game. I think Azul is, is that would be my go-to foundation game or gateway game. For, yeah. Even yeah. outside the holidays, I think Azul is just a real win. And it's a but, very, I mean, I think you can get it at Target. It's, yeah. it's everywhere. It's not expensive. It's very now, satisfying with the bits, like dominoes. I know there are a lot. There have come to be a lot of different versions of Azul out there. Are you you're talking about the original one? The original? I only have the original. Yeah, I think the original is yeah. fine. You yeah, know, if yeah. you really play it a lot, you go for the expansions. But um, yeah, I'm not yeah. sure what all's involved with all the. That's all a great those. choice. That is. That's a lot of fun. Very accessible. Yeah. A lot like architecture. And Sagrada. So Sagrada would also be a cousin to that. It's a similar yes. type of experience. Sagrada. It's accessible. Sagrada is a great choice. It's 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 um. People are going to like it just because of the table presence, because they're going to see yeah. colors and they're going to feel very, it's not, it's not battleships or 
war guys or Star Wars. Uh, this next one I picked because I, I'm guessing one you're going to pick. So I was trying to pick something a little different. And that's good old charades, which you don't even need. I mean, all you need is a list that's of words. Good. Yeah. And I'm sure there's charade generators online. But charades is great. You don't need anything. It gets people up and they're acting out of uh, different bits because, of course, you can do anything but talk. And it can play for a lot of laughs. And that could play huge you know you could have you could play that with 15 20 people potentially that's a great one because you do teams so that's charades is my third pick with maybe Fourth, a bonus of sagrada with a bonus of sagrada yeah yeah, yeah. shout out to Adrian. Fourth is is code names oh so good and that one's a little i found and i teach it sometimes people aren't they're a little confused at first yeah yeah because it, it it's a little un it's a little counterintuitive, which is a Vlada Chavadal type game. Seems like he, he often does that, but it's a great game, and that's a fun game, and that's yeah. that's a more competitive game. That's a great choice. I Codenames think I've played Code Names with more individual people than any other game I own, and, and I don't think mm. it's great for you know non hobby gamers, and I don't think I've ever played it with anyone. I mean, with maybe a rare exception where at the end of it, somebody doesn't say, now, how can I get this game? Where can I get it? Wow. You know, or the, everyone uh -huh. just really seems to really love it a lot. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a wordplay. Like it's comfortable. You know, you're yeah. trying to do clues. Yeah. So I put code names. And my last one is a new one to me. And that is Scout because Scout's just. Oh, amazing. yes. I've never ha had a game that had so much in such a little box. That, Scout amen. Yeah. Yes. And it's a little hard to find. I think maybe you can get it on Amazon, but in a resale type thing. But um, so it can be a little hard to find. Scout is great. It's really a lot like a gin rummy. To, it's like gin rummy, but kind of different. Yeah, that's such a great choice. We I love Scout. I totally agree with you. It's it's yeah. so much fun in such a very very tiny box. Um, everyone seems to enjoy it whenever we play it. Mm -hmm. Um. And if That's you've got great. older folks that maybe aren't in into games, but they probably know Gin Rummy, they're going to feel comfortable because yeah. they'll get like, okay, I do either multiples of one number or I do a run of numbers. And they're going to yeah. immediately get that. Yeah. And the difference yeah. is you can't rearrange your cards. So that's the that's that's where it's a meaty game because you're trying to dump cards to get them together in a way that then you can use them. Yeah. But not too early and not too late. Yeah, it's so good. It's so good. Yeah, there's, yeah. there's a lot of timing issues in Scout that makes it, I think any gamer is going to enjoy it. That's a great choice. Oh, that's a great choice. You know, uh, we've played Scout a, a lot as well. And and I, I enjoyed it already, but I played a game at a at our at the play retreat several games with, with a group. And they brought a, another level of fun to it, which is they decided Ooh. to play it. They decided to play it thematically. Because you know, it, thematically, it's about it's about hiring people for your circus, and, uh -huh. and 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 most of the time, you don't have to play it thematically at all. But on every card, there's like really a tiny print, the name of somebody's name, mm -hmm. like and I've noticed and, that, yeah, 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 and then like some some circus device, like a cannon or a trampoline or whatever. And so, so they would say, well, um, Susan and David may have a great trappy stilt act. But it's nothing compared to the combination of Xavier, oh, Margaret, God. and Melody uh, getting shot out of cannons. And then they throw it out. Everybody's oh, so That's so funny. So that, adding the little bit of circus theme to it was it just, was just like a commentary on it. Yeah, I've noticed yeah, those yeah. names and stuff. Yeah, yeah I, mean, I love that. They, it doesn't need the theme. You could just play without no. the theme. But I love the theme. No. It's really cute that you can hire away different circus acts to have a better <laughs> yeah, act. Yeah. And yeah. you're beating each other's act by having a better, yeah, it's, it's really, and, yeah. and Uno, the one thing for Uno, it's, I mean, that's not a great game. It's, it can just drag out. It's not, but, but the idea of someone going out suddenly yeah. is fun and yeah. Scout captures yeah. that because the game ends when someone's out of cards. So yeah. you're having to keep yeah. an eye on it as well as figuring out how am I going to go out Yeah, and, and I, it captures that in a way that it's a lot more fun than Uno. That's awesome. Great, yeah. great choices. What are your picks, Dan? I like man? those. Well, I'm really glad for your choices. Those were great, Kevin. Thank oh, you. Thank um, you. Thanks, man. And one thing I like about it is you you have a lot more. You have more kind of current games 
than mine. My list is a lot of older games, um, but that's, I think, largely because those are the games we we have played over the holidays. Um, mm. Some of my favorite holiday memories, and we do this almost every year, is at some point we usually get together with my mom. Um, and my mom listens faithfully to the podcast. So, hi, mom. Thanks for, hi, mom. for listening. Um, and uh, she's out in Kansas. And um, and and these are games that, that we have, that my mom likes to play, um, our, our, our adult children like to play, a home from college, and uh, and Kristen and I like to play, or when we go to visit Kristen's family in North Carolina, that that um, that her family likes to play as well. So th- these are games that just kind of spans the generations, and that um, that have been really popular. So, um, so none of these are like really hot current games, but but they're but they're fun games. Um, so the first one you mentioned earlier, Kevin, um, but it wasn't on your list. Can can you guess what it? It's okay if. You mentioned in the context Sagrada? of holiday games. No, even before, like earlier on in the episode. It's okay if not. Easter um, eggs? No. Good. Trade. I don't mean to make you look. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. I don't remember. Um, I don't remember anything. No, like Warhammer 40,000 is the... <laughs> no, I'm just joking. <laughs> I knew your mom was into that game. <laughs> no, just just kidding. Um, which is a massively <laughs> heavy game, and I've never played it. Um, right. No, uh, Rummy Cube. Rummy Cube, oh, Rummy is, Cube. Rummy Cube is, is a, great. It's a big holiday game. Yeah. And, yeah, you know, yeah. and again, it's very much this kind of sense of a gin rummy kind of game, but you play it with tiles and you're trying to get runs or sequence. I forget exactly what they're called. Runs or, or um, mm-hmm. sets, runs or sets. And you can play off of each other in a common table. And Yeah, you can but, replace like that. I love that yeah. little idea. Yeah. Yeah. And you have to rearrange them. And sometimes it's like this, this is almost like a complex Rube Goldberg machine where you have to, mm-hmm. if I move this over here and this goes over here and this goes over here and it can be, it's so, it's so much fun. Uh, Rummy cube is a lot of fun. Yeah, and we, we actually play one. it digitally sometimes with my mom too. There's a nice uh, uh-huh. iPad implementation of it. That you can play across the miles with people. So Rummy cube is my first one. Next one is an old um, card game, old German card game called six nymphed six nymphed. Okay. I've seen that one. Yeah, I think it's for sale. It's it, in the U.S. They have put it. I think they've recently changed the name for it in the U.S. to Take Five. Um, okay. But either Six Nymphed and I M M T or Take Five. It's just a great game, and you can play that up to ten people, super fast. Everybody plays one card at the same time, and then you have mm-hmm. to resolve the cards around the table. And um, it sounds when you first play it, it feels like total chaos, like it's totally luck based. Um, and for the longest time we said, this is a total luck based game, but then we had a, uh, a then wonderful, Kristen kept winning. <laughs> well, no, we had a wonderful exchange student from Belgium, Antoine live with us. And, uh, he told us that he grew up playing this game with his grandma mm-hmm. and by golly, he won every game. <laughs> really? So, so we think there, there's probably more strategy to it than we think. Um, but it is a lot of fun. Is it, is it matching cards like numbers or suits? You, you or? have to. Yeah. Everyone puts down their, the cards are one to a hundred or like one to one Oh four or something like that. Everybody puts down their car, one card from their hand. You have 10 cards in your hand randomly. You turn them over. You have to put them in order in these rows following some rules. And mm-hmm. if you ever place the sixth card in a row, you have to take the whole row which gives you points against you. You don't okay. win points. The lowest point wins. And um, it's just a great game. And, and, That's cool. and, and super fun, I'll super easy. Great. Speaking of super fun and easy, that's kind of that's kind of uh, the theme for my games. Strike is another one. Okay. Um, Strike. Strike is a dice a dice game. And uh, it's probably one of the better knowns of this of on the games on my list. Uh, Strike uh, you just take a handful of dice and you're just chucking these dice into this kind of arena in the middle mm-hmm. that's formed out of the box. Um, and um, super easy, super fun, super luck-based, but um, it just goes so fast. Nobody minds that it's luck-based. And you're trying to eliminate your opponents. You're the last person. It's 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 so much um, push your luck. It's, it's just push your luck dice game. A lot of fun. Strike is is a great I, game. I don't know that one that's all that yeah. sounds great dice it's are a, fun it's a lot of fun 
Dieter Nussel, I believe is the, I, I just say that it is the designer Excuse name because strike is a common name. If you, if you search for this game strike by Dieter Nussel, he's the designer name, N-U-U-Blaut. And then that German double S thing, L-E. Um, Dieter with an umlaut. That's right. That's right. All right. All five. Dieter with an umlaut. umlaut all five. <laughs> I'm trying to do like the voice in a store sometimes you hear. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I thought Paging you might Dr. say umlaut, umlaut Paging, omelet. Page. An omelet. An, <laughs> an umlaut omelet would be. That would be. We should spell omelet with an umlaut. An umlaut. An umlet. There's so, what anyway. is, is it top secret? It's the guys that made airplane. I think it's in top secret, but he's trying to learn German. And one of the phrases is, <laughs> there's sauerkraut in my lederhosen. <laughs> <laughs> and he has to say it. <laughs> no one would put sauerkraut in lederhosen. But... <laughs> That's so great. That's so great. <laughs> so dumb. That's so dumb. I love it. I love it. Um, have you ever worn Lederhosen? I've never worn Lederhosen. I have haven't you? either. No. You know, it just occurs to me as I, as we're talking about it. I, I just know enough German to be dangerous in it. But is is it, I think, does Lederhosen literally mean singing pants? Singing? Singing pants. Like leader is, leader song. is songs oh. and Hosen are pants. Is it? Song pants? No, that can't be right. That can't be right. Oh, Dana's gonna look it up. I I'm don't gonna know. look it up. Um, uh, and oh no, it's later hosen, <laughs> which is le which is leather pants. Leather pants. It's not leader hosen, which would be <laughs> singing uh, pants. But later uh, hosen is leather pants. Get you in trouble. However, I would fully support the idea of developing something called singing pants pants that you put on to sing singing pants so it I means would leather pants, pants but they're not hosen. pants and they're not leather aren't they i think the they're, i think we traditionally made out of leather i don't know okay but later hosen okay. means leather pants leader hosen leather. which doesn't exist would mean song pants which i, I would fully sing. support the development of okay all right um number four my fourth one and this is this mm -hmm. is not in either order but just my, the fourth one i want to name is Sky Joe, S K Y J O. Okay. Sky Sky Joe, have you heard of this game? No, but I'm hoping it's a GI Joe adjacent. I'm afraid it's not. Dang it! I bet it would be good. Sky Joe is um, S K Y J O. It's a card game. I've heard it's very similar to a game that you play with a traditional deck of cards called golf, but I've never played okay. golf. But you have a um, you have a grid of twelve cards in front of you. Most of them are upside down. Some of them are turned up. They go from value of negative two to 12, I believe. And at, like um, Six Nymph, you want the least number of points at the end. You, the lowest score wins. And at various times during the game, you have to flip over cards in front of you. You replace the cards with cards from the common deck or cards from a deck where you know the card. And um, sometimes you have to replace them without knowing what you're replacing. And so the and and that can create for some for some fun. You're trying to be the first person to go out, and sometimes you catch other people before they flipped over their cards. Hmm. So um, so they may get stuck with like a twelve, and it's like, oh no, I got stuck with a twelve. Um, and then there's this cool little twist that if you get three numbers in a row, you get to eliminate that entire row, that entire column. Uh. Um, but it's a lot of fun. Sky Joe, S K Y J O, Sky a great Joe. card game that we have enjoyed. My kids, my mom, Kristen and me, Sky Joe is good. And then finally, there are probably two great games that we enjoy across the generations over the holidays. The first one is Remy Cube, especially enjoy. And and the the second one is this, my last one on my list, Quirkle. Have you heard of right. Quirkle? Yeah. I have. I've not yeah. played it much. We had the kids have it, yes. Yeah. Quirkle by uh, Susan McKinley Ross. Um it's this great chunky wooden tile game with different symbols of different colors on them and again kind of like remy cube you have this common area in the middle where you're trying to put your tiles together and you have to match and not match by um mm -hmm. color and by symbol and um it's just great uh, quirkle mm -hmm. is a fantastic game would highly recommend it for a good holiday game i think those are great suggestions thanks thanks so wow. I, I like how are, you you had some more modern ones and I, I, I had some no, older ones. I think see, was... I 
I just knew you were going to go for uh, telestrations. So that's why I, well, I thought I'd do charades. You know, honestly, <clears throat> I, I, telestrations should be on the list because we played a lot. But I was just I, – I feel like I talk about telestrations so much. I wanted to try to go for some right. different ones I haven't mentioned. But but yeah, those that's that's a great one yeah. too. Yeah, telestrations would be our, our uh, gold winner because that, that's a great game. Yeah, yeah. Because it's it's just good, silly fun. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think that's it. Um, Excellent. Whatever holidays you may be celebrating or not celebrating this season, to all of our listeners and viewers, we hope that they're happy. And we hope you get to play a lot of games. And we appreciate you listening so much. Uh, it is it is such a joy and a gift that you um, that you tune in or watch. We really appreciate all of you. Kevin, how can people get connected to us? Orgainfaith.com will get you to our, a lot of our information. And we have a newsletter. If you follow that, you can subscribe there. And it's just a bi-weekly newsletter. We give some thoughts and ideas and ramblings. And so that that that's the weeks that we don't drop a podcast. So that's a great way, as well as on Instagram. Our Instagram name is Lederhosen. Lederhosen. That's song right. pants. Song pants. <laughs> what was what was the correct one? Later hosen. Later hosen is leather pants. That's correct, which is the correct one. Yeah, yeah. But we go with leader hosen. Leader hosen. We're actually board song game pants. faith on Instagram, but we need to do leader hosen. I'm going to try to get that one too. Yeah, yeah, that'd be good. That'd be In good. our link tree at board game faith, you can find all those links for board for newsletter things like that. Um, if you listen to us, and if you wouldn't mind thinking about rating and reviewing the podcast wherever you watch it or listen to it, that'd be great. That helps the mm -hmm. algorithms uh, recommend the podcast to more people too. So Yeah, and we are we have video on YouTube or audio through your podcast player. So whichever one you listen to, totally fine. We just want you to know we're also in that mirror universe if that also works for you. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, great. Well, Kevin, thank you so much. And all of our listeners, thank you so much. It's great spending time with you and happy holidays. Yep, bye-bye. Bye-bye.